Oro means oral cavity and antrum means maxillary sinus. It is a communication between the oral cavity and the maxillary sinus. When there is a fresh communication between the oral cavity and the maxillary sinus, we call it as an oroantral communication. When there is a long-standing communication with formation of a pathological epithelial tract between the maxillary sinus and the oral cavity, we call it as a chronic oroantral fistula. It's a chronic phenomenon. What are the various etiology <coughs> relating to uh, oroantral communication? Uh, it could be due to extraction of maxillary posterior teeth, uh, particularly first molar teeth, uh, second molars and premolars. Various trauma relating to the uh, maxillofacial region. Pathologies like cysts and tumors of maxillary alveolar region which could erode the bone and cause maxillary sinus. And various surgical procedures pertaining to the uh, maxillary areas, maxillary sinus region or maxillary areas like implant surgery. So this is just to show a tumor which erodes the uh, maxillary sinus area and which causes oral communication. So there is a difference between fresh oral communication and uh, a communication which persists for long duration. In a fresh oral communication, there is escape of fluids, escape of blood, escape of air, enhanced column of air and uh, excruciating pain in and around the maxillary sinus region. When there is, uh, when it is a long-standing communication, the patient will complain about pain, uh, mucopurulent discharge or nasal discharge, post-nasal drip, possible systemic conditions uh, like fever, malaise, lymphadenopathy and popping out of antral polyp uh, from the maxillary sinus. So various tests can be done uh, on chair to confirm oral communication. So basically we need to know whether there is a communication between the oral cavity and maxillary sinus. You ask the patient to, to close the nose and blow out through the mouth. Okay, if there is um, any sort of air which is passing, which escapes through the uh, socket, uh, the, if you keep a cotton near the socket, the cotton will try to uh, deflect okay if you keep a mouth mirror uh, near the socket the mouth mirror will fork okay and a uh, patient himself might tell that there is some kind of uh, escape of fluid or blood coming out through the nose so these are the various tests which you can do for immediate communication uh, various investigation techniques being intraoral periapical view orthopandemogram or paranasal view so these are the investigations which you can directly view to see whether there is any uh, communication between the socket. So management, there is, uh, you can divide it into two, treatment of early cases and treatment of deep cases. So treatment of early cases is focused at if fistula is not recent, fistula tract has not been established in like long term communication cases. Uh, you can do a primary repair to close the communication and you can give an antibiotics. What do you do in early cases, uh, which is not permanent if the communication is very small, you should not attempt to disturb the clot. So what you can do is, you can try to bring the buccal and the lingual flap in close approximation and give a tight closure by reducing the buccal and the palatal wall so that nothing from the oral cavity escapes through the maxillary sinus. So you can give a horizontal mattress suture as well. Uh, sometimes you can give a danger plate uh, with flange extension to cover the opening which will enhance the healing. So as supporting measures, you can give antibiotics, nasal decongestions uh, and analgesics. So what are the methods to remove the uh, root from the maxillary sinus. We can use a high volume suction tip number five, which could be placed inside the socket, okay, with copious irrigation of saline flushed into it in order to remove the uh, root from the maxillary sinus. If that attempt fails, then you can go for cat value surgery. So, what are the 
uh, treatment options for oroenteral fistula of long duration. When the patient tells that extraction is done two, three weeks back, there is complaint of foul taste in the mouth or pus discharge from the mouth. So what you can do is drainage of axillary sinus is established with copious irrigation with saline. Give a supportive medical treatment with antibiotics and analgesics. Once the acute condition subsides, then you go for surgical repair. So the various surgical uh, flaps which is used for oroenteral fistula is buccal flap, palatal flap and combination of both. Okay, so buccal advancement flap is one of the treatment option. Uh, start with giving, it is also called as von Rahman flap, okay, which was described by 1936. Okay, procedure is you give an injection with local anesthesia, excise the fistulous tract, okay, the incision is made around the fistulous tracts 3 to 4 mm marginal to the then start giving two divergent incisions with number 15 okay and these incisions are made down to the bone while extending the incision on either side of the uh, communication make sure that you should not damage the duct of the parotid salivary gland so mucophilistyl flap is reflected and uh, and it is advanced by periosteal stripping and closed brought to the palatal and it is suture okay so complete arrest of hemorrhage uh, has to be done so so this is a diagram showing the buccal advancement flap so modified Rahman's buccal advancement flap can also be done here, after mobilization of the buccal flap, after taking the releasing periosteal incision, the free end of the flap, which is to be sutured to the palatal mucosa, is modified. A step is created along the entire length of the free margin of the buccal flap in the submucosal area by removal of 1 to 2 mm of mucosal layer. Okay, and then it is uh, pulled below the palatal mucosal edge with few vertical mattress sutures. So by this procedure, the step in the submucosa will come in approximation with the palatal edge, which is closed by the means of ducted sutures. So you can also opt for a palatal flap. So the pal palate gets its blood supply from greater palatine arteries, which emerge from the greater palatine foramen. So uh, and it runs in the palate somewhat midway between the gingival margin and the palate. Okay, so uh, here also you start up with your uh, anesthesia as same as you have done with the buccal advance flap. Uh, you can mark the palatal flap with bony blue ink before your operation. Raise the palatal mucoperiosteal flap. Care is taken not to damage the greater palatal artery. Uh, maxillary sinus is inspected. Trimming of uh, buccal and mucoperiosteum is done. And you do a rotation advancement of the palatal pedicle to approximate the buccal margin of ducted sutures. So these are the steps which you have done to advance the palatal flap. So you can also use a combination of buccal and palatal flap if the defect is bigger, then you can uh, go with a combination of both the flap. So next is Cadman loop operation by George Cadwell in 1893 and Luke in 1897. It's a method of gaining entry into the maxillary sinus via canine fossa with nasal androstomy. So what are the indications for uh, Cadwell Luke operation is removal of root fragments to treat chronic maxillary sinus, to remove cyst and tumors, uh, to manage any hematoma or blood collection in the maxillary sinus, segmatic complex fractures and removal of impacted so the surgical procedure is done under local anesthesia. You start with a semilunar incision in the buccal vestibule from the canine to the second molar region just above the gingival attachment. So a mucoperiosteal flap is reflected uh, with a periosteal elevator till the infraorbital ridge. Care taken not to uh, injure the infraorbital nerve. So an opening or window is created 
the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus. The opening is enlarged carefully in all directions. The size obtained should be the size of the index finger. This is to facilitate the palpation of the maxillary sinus lining with introduction of index finger into the maxillary sinus cavity. So through this, this opening, you can try to take any of the foreign bodies from the maxillary sinus. Her should be sucked away from the sinus and a copious irrigation of maxillary sinus is carried out with copious. So this is uh, the schematic representation of uh, cat value cooperation. So you can see the semilunar uh, incision okay and the point of entry of uh, cat value cooperation and in the infraorbital foramen. Point of entry after giving the semilunar these are the steps. So causes of failure in closing the oral fistula could be uh, you are not eliminating the infection completely, patient's general physical condition, flaps with tight closure, okay, or tension. So post-operative management, uh, we have to start with giving antibiotics for at least seven days, analgesics anti-inflammatory drugs, uh, benzoin inhalation or steam inhalation uh, for three days. Patient is instructed not to blow through the nose to have a soft diet and avoid weakened gargling. So to conclude, oriental fistula occurs commonly during extraction of posterior teeth, maxillary posterior teeth, and it is mandatory to the dentist to detect and manage properly to prevent further complications. Thank you.